don't you be calling me out my name I Ain't nothing good gon' come to you Till you do right by me Just another day living in the hood Just another day around the way You, take you, now it's time to rhyme Can you relate to a sister? Well, well it's the L.A., the T.I., the F.A.H.O.C.Y. The Q double E and is the reason I must be myself A little touch of ladies first before Little Kim, Missy Elliott, and Nicki Minaj, there was Queen Latifah, one of the founding females of hip-hop. Queen Latifah came up in the early days of the genre in the 1980s and rose to royal status at just 19 years old. Her debut album, All Hail the Queen, dropped in 1989. She was at the top of the game in the early 90s, and in 1993, her third album, Black Rain, became the first album by female rapper to go gold. Queen Latifah is the first female rapper to join the National Recording Registry with her debut album, All Hail the Queen. Her album showed rap could cross genres including reggae, hip-hop, house, and jazz, while also opening opportunities for other female rappers. After earning the Best Rap Solo Performance Grammy nomination for three consecutive years and returning home empty-handed, Latifah finally won the 1995 award for her single Unity, a song calling for solidarity and respect between men and women within the black community. Released as a part of her third studio album and peaking at number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100, 1993's Black Rain Unity is Latifah's highest charting solo single to date. The song's best rap solo performance win made Latifah the first woman in hip-hop history to win a Grammy award. You heard that, right? Which has since been accomplished, of course, by several other female rap stars, including Lauryn Hill, Missy Elliott, Eve, and Cardi B. She has received various accolades, including a Primetime Emmy Award, a Golden Globe Award, three Screen Actors Guild Awards, and two NAACP Image Awards, in addition to a nomination for an Academy Award. And in 2006, she became the first hip-hop artist to receive a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So why don't people talk about Queen Latifah when it comes to the greats like that enough? They don't talk about her enough. She is supreme as a queen because she came in the era where it first started and it was heavily male dominated. And not only was she one of the ones along with of course the ice cubes of it that capitalized off of that and went into acting also, but also brand deals with Revlon, you know, she really showed that you could, you don't have to be like bare and showing a lot of skin and doing that to be popular, to be hot in the streets, to have people bump into your music. And what I love about her songs, they were all positive. That was always a message and she really is the standard for a lot of female rap artists and male artists that look to her as like the blueprint on how to really climb up the ladder once you've already made it and make sure you don't fade into obscurity. She is still relevant, has remained relevant, and is still a hot topic of discussion. Okay, so give her her flowers in the comments. Her favorite color is purple, so leave a purple heart in the comment section for Queen Latifah, okay, and give her your flowers. I also want you guys to comment below your favorite song. Mine is Ladies First. Comment below your favorite Queen Latifah movie. For me, it's a holiday because it's all about self-care, trying new things, putting yourself out there, and I live for her in that gorgeous red gown that she wore at the restaurant. Oh, there were so many gems and lessons in that movie, and it feels so good. It was just a nice, feel-good movie. I love LL Cool J in it also. Comment below your favorite. We are going to get into her childhood and also a couple hush-hush things that she don't really talk about in her life. We're going to get into all of these details, okay? But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Queen Allude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notification bells if you're already subscribed so you never miss an upload. Before we get into her childhood, let's get into a couple of her favorite things. As we said, her favorite color is purple, so leave a purple heart in the comments. And when it comes to favorite food, she has a couple. She said she would never give up her funnel cake. She also loves Zipoli, Jimmy Buffs, Italian hot dogs, steak, pasta, baked macaroni and cheese, and she loves herself a good tea party. She said, whenever I get home, I have a nice cup of tea with milk and sugar good old classic style end quote her favorite city is new york as a kid she wanted to be a marine biologist and a truck driver she also loves sci-fi books and movies she also always traveled with her bible now let's get into her childhood queen latifah was born dana elaine owens on march 18th 1970 and she had an eventful childhood growing up in Newark, New Jersey. Her parents Rita LeMay and Lancelot Amos Owens divorced when she was just 10 years old. Raised in the Baptist faith, Latifah attended Catholic school in Newark and later Essex Catholic Girls High School in Irvington before finally graduating from Irvington High School. She was a natural athlete and played power forward on her high school basketball team. Her passion for sports never waned and she has been known to attend sporting events and make appearances as a sports commentator from time to time. 
She discovered her love for music and performing early on. Latifah's family has always been supportive of her career and she often spoke fondly of her childhood. In an interview, she said that her childhood was pretty normal despite her parents' divorce. The experience taught her to be independent and resourceful, but things weren't always so sweet. According to Essence Magazine, for a short period of time when she was a child, Latifah was a victim of SA at the hands of a teenager charged with her care. He violated me, she says, of him. I never told anybody. I just buried it as deeply as I could and kept people at an arm's distance. I never really let a person get too close to me. I could have been married years ago, but I had a commitment issue. Eventually, she opened up to her parents who separated when she was young and she said, I had to get it off my chest. My mother felt terrible. She was kind of a country girl, so she wasn't up on how slick people could be. When I told my dad, he said nothing, end quote. Latifah says now that it was scary when her father didn't respond. He's a man of actions, he says. So she knew he was about to, you know, he meant business. In terms of hobbies, Latifah has always been interested in music. She started her musical career at the age of 19 and quickly rose to fame as a rapper. She she later transitioned to acting and became known for her powerful roles on both the small and big screens. As for her stage name, the name Latifah caught her attention when she was just 8 years old. She found it in a book of Arabic names and loved the meaning behind it which translates to delicate and very kind in Arabic. She adopted it as her stage name and became known as Queen Latifah. Now let's get into her career. Latifah got her very first job as a Burger King employee for a period of time. She began her career as a rapper, beatboxing for the hip hop group Ladies Fresh, and eventually became becoming an original member of the Flavor Unit. Her demo recording of Princess of the Posse caught the attention of Tommy Boy Music employee Dante Ross, who signed her and released her first single, Wrath of My Madness, in 1989. Latifah's music focused on the issues surrounding black women, covering topics such as DV, harassment on the streets, and relationship problems. Her debut album, All Hail the Queen, released in 1989, when she was only 19 years old, made a lasting impact on hip hop. The single, Ladies First, My Favorite, featuring Monty Love, became the first collaborative track by two female rappers who were not in a group. Her 1993 album Black Rain went gold in the United States and produced the Grammy Award winning song Unity. Latifah was also a member of the hip-hop collective Native Tongues. Latifah's film career began with supporting roles in the 1991 and 1992 films House Party 2, Juice, and Jungle Fever. She also appeared in two episodes of the second season of the NBC hit The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and as herself on a TV sitcom Hanging with Mr. Cooper in 1993. From 1993 to 1998, Latifah had a starring role on the Fox sitcom Living Single. <laughs> This gained high ratings amongst black audiences. She also wrote and performed its theme song and her mother Rita played her mother on screen. And let me tell you about Living Single. Let me take, that's my favorite show of all time, of all time. Y'all don't know how many times I watched that show that I got the lines memorized, the episodes memorized. Since I was a kid, it was two shows that taught me how to speak English. It was Seinfeld and it was Living Single. And now it's kind of like my comfort show at night. You know, you everybody has that comfort show. It's right there with Abbott Elementary for me. They're just so comforting, so relaxing and, you know, reminding you of the 90s, the good old time. Queen Latifah always reminded me of my older sister, just the energy, the vibe and everything. And I just always liked her on screen. All the cast of Living single i'm gonna do videos for all of them it's really if you want to know what my favorite show is it's living single so as you can tell i'm really excited about that and the theme song come on name a better theme song latifah's breakthrough role came in the 1996 box office hit set it off in which she played a bank robber she had a supporting role in the holly hunter film living out loud in 1998 she played the role of thelma in the 1999 movie the bone collector alongside denzel washington and angelina jolie Latifah also had her own talk show, The Queen Latifah Show, which aired from 1999 to 2001 and was later revamped in 2013. She received critical acclaim for her performance as Matron Mama Morton in the 2002 musical film Chicago, earning an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Along with the film The Secret Life of Bees, she presented the segment honoring film professionals who had died during 2008 and sing I'll Be Seeing You during the montage at the 81st Academy Award in 2009. Latifah also spoke at Michael Jackson's memorial service in Los Angeles. In addition to her film career, Latifah has continued to make music 
and released her fourth hip hop album, Order in the Court, in 1998. She has received numerous accolades for her work, including a Candace Award from the National Coalition of 100 Black Women in 1992, a Grammy Award for Unity in 1995, and an honorary doctorate degree in Humane Letters from Delaware State University in 2011. And in 2014, she performed America the Beautiful at the Super Bowl with Carrie Underwood. Now, as far as scandals, come on, even the queen has some scandals, right? Queen Latifah is known for her amazing talent and incredible achievements, but has also faced some of the most heartbreaking tragedies and challenges in life. One of the most devastating events that shook her world was the loss of her older brother, Lancelot Jr. In 1992, his life was taken in an accident involving a motorcycle that Latifah has purchased for him. The incident left her feeling lost, angry, and completely shattered. However, she found strength in the love and memories of her beloved brother, whom she held dear to her heart. Over the years, Latifah has spoken publicly about the loss of her brother, sharing how it has changed her life and shaped her as a person. And in 2006 interview, she revealed that she still wears the key to the motorcycle around her neck, which is visible in her performances and her sitcom, Living Single. The key serves as a reminder of her brother, his love of motorcycles, and the bond they shared. In addition to the loss of her brother, Latifah was also a victim of a carjacking in 1995, which resulted in her boyfriend, Sean Moon, being shot. This was a traumatic event that caused her much pain and fear. But thankfully, both she and her boyfriend survived the ordeal and were able to heal physically and emotionally with time. Moving forward, Latifah faced some legal issues, including a Mary Jane possession charge and a DUI charge in 1996 and 2002, respectively. These incidents may have tarnished her squeaky clean image, but she has always been upfront and honest about her past mistakes and how she has learned and grown from them. Finally, in March 2018, Latifah lost her beloved mother, actress Rita Owen, who always had a beautiful smile on her face due to heart failure. This is yet another devastating loss that weighed heavily on her heart and despite the pain and grief, Latifah has shared how she has found comfort in the love and memories she shared with her mother who is not just a parent but also a best friend and confidant to her. Now with all that, there was also more controversy with her and Foxy Brown. The drama between Foxy Brown and Queen Latifah ignited in mid-1996 when rumors swirled that Brown was the main target of Latifah's scathing track name calling featuring on the set it off soundtrack not one to back down Brown fired back with allegations of Latifah eyeing her at music events and openly questioned Latifah's sexuality during radio interviews. And in 1998, the feud escalated as Brown released 10% Diss, a diss track that continued to question Latifah's sensuality and accuse her of being envious. By late spring of 1998, Queen Latifah had enough and responded with her own diss track, Name Call in Part 2. In the song, she called out Brown's overemphasis on sensual appeal, suggesting that skimpy outfits mask her lackluster rap rap skills. Unfazed, Foxy Brown clapped back with Talk To Me, poking fun at the ratings of Latifah's TV show while making homo, you know, remarks directed at Latifah and newcomer Queen Penn. The media loved the drama and many declared Queen Latifah the victor of this lyrical showdown and hip hop magazine Ego Trip praised Latifah's name calling part two as the winning track, stating that the ladies still first, a nod to Latifah's 1990 single, Ladies First. Fortunately, by 2000, the two rap queens buried the hatchet and to prove their truce was genuine, Foxy Brown performed her song, Nana Be Like, on the Queen Latifah show, and just like that, the rap world breathed a collective sigh of relief, okay? So the Queen since then has been unproblematic and hasn't beef with anybody, okay? She's just happy living her life. Now let's talk about the interest in her private life, okay? Her personal life has always been a topic of curiosity, especially when it comes to her sensuality. Rumors have circulated for years about her sensuality, but the star has remained tight-lipped about her private affairs. In a 2008 interview with the New York Times magazine, Queen Latifah spoke about her thoughts on the topic. She made it clear that she was perfectly comfortable discussing the topic of somebody being gay, but when it comes to her own personal life, she wants to keep it out of the public eye. She stated, and I quote, I don't feel like I need to share my personal life and I don't care if people think I'm gay or not. Assume whatever you want. You do it anyway. End quote. Currently, there is no public information available about Queen Latifah's current partner. The star has chosen to keep that part of her life under wraps. However, rumors have circulated around over the years about her romantic relationships. Queen Latifah has been linked to people like Ebony Nichols, Jeanette Jenkins, and even actress Paula Patton. But in the end, many have speculated that Ebony Nichols is the love of her life and they have a son together. Rebel's arrival was confirmed in 2019 and at the 2021 BET Awards. Latifah herself 
both seem to confirm both her relationship with Nichols and the addition of their son to their family. During her acceptance speech for the Lifetime Achievement Award, Latifa closed with, Happy Pride, before saying, Ebony, my love, rebel, my love, end quote, while raising a hand to her heart. And this is all we have for this video. I love Queen Latifah. She's been very unproblematic throughout the years and just been collecting her bags left to right, minding her business and her hair, honey. Let's talk about her hair. <laughs> I know I, I didn't do much of a beauty segment because she don't really talk about those things in interviews. She really keeps quiet, but her hair has been laid for decades, okay? Now, she was always very well polished, very well put together and dressed and really took great care of herself. And I love to see it. Comment below your thoughts. Who else would you guys like to see? I know y'all gonna request Lil' Kim and the other likes of it. Comment below what 90s rappers, 80s rappers that you guys will want me to add to my list also. I don't wanna do the newer girls just yet. Still, you know, getting their feet wet. Even Nicki Minaj, she's still in the game. She still have many more years to be in the game. So I wanna see just how far they go before I start doing breakdowns for them because I know sometimes you guys request younger people for me to do and I'm like I want to see what else they accomplish you know let's give it some time but comment below who else would you guys like to see I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time mm -hmm.